Welcome back in Clay Travis Buck Sexton show joined now by Eric Trump and we were just talking about your dad's the way that he walked into the RNC last night you were there you saw it but I want to start because I said I was going to ask you this question you got two young kids six-year-old four-year-old he's grandpa to your kids while he may well be the next president of the country again where were you when you saw what happened at the rally what was your reaction and what has your dad been? We had him on the show Friday. Sure. He was fantastic. But what has he been like so that you've seen him in the last 72 hours, basically, since that happened? Yeah, well, I was sitting there watching it with my, my kids on the couch. Wow. And, um, you know, the shots broke. I'm a shooter. I know that sound very, very well, and my heart sank, right? I mean, obviously, you see him go down. You see him grab his head. He goes down. And then, you know, at that point, he's behind the stanchions, those you know, stanchions up front, which, you know, are meant to take bullets. But obviously, they're coming in from, from high. All Secret Service agents, you know, jump on him, and you know, frankly, you know, there's a good chance he was dead. It literally, I mean, it's divine intervention. What do you, whatever we want, call it, right? I'm not a mushy guy, but it's, um, I mean, that bullet literally grazed his ear. It took off part of his ear. Like you don't get closer to death than that in life. Had he not turned at the last second, he would have been dead. And so my heart sank. Obviously, he came up. You know, there's blood all over the face, blood on the side of the, you know. So again, we didn't know if he got hit in the torso. We didn't, you know, know how he was doing. And then he put up his hand and he said, "Fight, fight, fight." And uh, and what was it like to see your dad in that moment? I, I can't even describe for everyone else what it, it's probably the most iconic political moment of any of our lives. And I've never seen people so fired up, so yeah. joyous, you know, to go from that, the low, which you just described of, oh my God, what have they done? You know, what has happened to Trump, to your dad, to he's okay. And also, this guy is like Leonidas in 300 or something. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, no question. Then to go to the even higher of that, right? I mean, obviously he gets up, but we still don't know if he's, if he's okay. He's being rushed to the emergency room and, you know, all sorts of vehicles with machine guns all over him and everything else. I mean, it was, but then exactly 48 hours later, I was the delegate from Florida yes. who cast the deciding vote that made him the Republican nominee to president of the United States. And I, I looked at Laura last night. And I said, I don't think there's ever been kind of this dichotomy of, of two sides. I mean, Getting punched in the stomach, thinking he was possibly dead on the ground with Secret Service agents lying on top of him, to obviously making him the Republican nominee, to then seeing him walk into the convention last night, the first time he's really been seen since that shooting. And there was kind of a somberness to him last night. You know, we guys, think he walks with an aura of destiny. That's what we've been saying. That's what it feels like as an observer. I can't imagine what it's like being as close to it as you are with your dad being the guy who is the guy? I've seen it time and time again over the last eight years. It's, it, the way that pendulum has sh has shifted, right? I mean, every, every single time, there's no question that there's somebody's hand on him and you know somebody's watching down and, and protecting him. But that was way too close, and it shouldn't have happened. It should have never happened. And listen, I give a lot of credit to the Secret Service agents on that stage, right? I mean, people are trying to take shots at everybody. I, I know those agents, and, and these are people who love him, adore him. The female in that you know in that picture that's become very famous. She was with me for three years when I had Secret Service. One of the kindest, nicest. But by the way, best shooters in the Secret Service because I shoot with all those guys, and I mean she's she's as good as it comes. And I can only imagine how that crushed her soul that somebody failed on the outside and allowed that to happen. Somebody let an assault rifle within 150 yards of the president of the United States. That's a chip shot, right? That should have never happened before. I mean, it's. Yeah. I'm sure you saw last night. They asked Joe Biden, well, basically, were there going to be any consequences? And he said, I talked to him evidently forgetting that he has a female head of the Secret Service. Is there any doubt in your mind that she should go just based on how big of a failure that was to allow that to occur? It is the greatest failure, I think, in the history of our government. And I'm not putting that on the agents on stage. Again, I would do anything for those guys. I, let me just reiterate to your listeners. They are the greatest people. They were willing to take a bullet for him. And had it not been for the counter sniper teams, and I've shot with those guys, and they're the real deal. They're, they're the best of the best. You know, had it not been for there, you would have had dead agents on that stage as well. You would have had a dead former president, a dead future president, and you would have had dead agents on that stage had it not been for the CS guys. But somebody really screwed the pooch on this one. They really, really messed up, and it should not have happened. I mean, it, it is a failure. And the fact that Biden didn't know it, but listen, you know, the Secret Service came from Pepsi. I mean, why wouldn't you come from Pepsi? I mean, that, 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 right. that seems like a... Guys, this country it, needs to change. It, it's it's insane. I mean, all this DEI stuff, is it's just insane. Do, do it, you... I mean, you would know this... Um, do you, your dad, the top people around him advising him, are you already thinking about who's going to go? Everyone talks about Secretary of State. Everyone talk, there are certain roles, right, that people play this, this parlor game, if you will, of where they're going to go. 
no one ever thinks of Secret Service Director. I know it's under DHS, but people don't think of necessarily some of those agency positions. But having been to the big dance, so to speak, once as the president and having been there by your dad as he did it, are you already thinking about that, that next tier, especially on the security, national security side of things? Who can clean these places up? Because the culture is, I mean, I can speak from the CIA side. I have a lot of friends still in there. The culture is messed up. It's not just people are making mistakes. You better believe that's going to be his number one priority on day one is, is cleaning house and the shops that are just out of control. CIA, I mean, listen, I fought the, the whole Russia hoax investigation. I was the guy that got the, the phone call, right? I got the call from the New York Times, uh, the Washington Post. I hear there are secret servers in the basement of Trump Tower that are communicating directly with the Kremlin. I go, first of all, we're like a cloud-based company, so we don't have servers. <laughs> Second of all, you don't put servers in basements because basements, you know, flood. So like, yes. let, let's, let's just start the obvious. And they let that crap go on for three years. They pitted two nuclear superpowers against each other for the sake of trying to get Hillary an extra three votes. All right. Let, let's just yeah. let's be honest with who these people are. They knew it was a sham day one and they let it go on and hang over the presidency. That's how bad it is. Believe me, it, it this problem will be taken care of on day one. He knows the bad. He knows the good. He knows how the system works. He knows how the system has targeted him. And you better believe me, they'll get cleaned up. And you better believe me, there will be... Um, There'll be changes made in, in that organization. As a son, somebody takes a shot at my dad and they say the FBI is investigating the same FBI that is trying to put my dad in prison for the rest of his life. Don't you have to be sitting there saying how in the world can we trust any of the government apparatus that is surrounding him right now, even to try to figure out the assassination story, how it happened? It's so corrupt. I mean, that was what I would think as a son. That has to be going through your mind all the time. Because right? he started this whole charade by spying on his campaign. Yes. And he said it. And then on 60 Minutes, I go, no, no, no. We, how do you have any proof? He goes, they're spying on my campaign. I'm telling you, they're spying on my campaign. And sure enough, they were obviously spying on his campaign. No, I don't have any any trust, and neither does the, the country. And by the way, I've, I've got a couple of buddies who are FBI agents. The greatest people you'll ever meet in your yeah. entire life, right? I mean, this isn't this isn't the gun carriers. These these aren't the people who are going after organized crime, right? right. The, these are the people on the top floor of those you know very fancy buildings that they they sit in. It's no different than the Secret Service. The people that are actually carrying the guns and doing the job in the Secret Service, best people you'll ever meet. You go to the eighth floor in Washington D.C., and I would say the exact opposite. I'm not actually sure if they have his best <laughs> interest in mind, and right. that hurts my soul to say. I will protect the field agents. You know, I mean, many of these guys are. Some of my closest friends, they would do anything for me. Um, um, I did want to ask, since we're talking personnel, obviously the J.D. Vance announcement's a big deal. Some of us saw it coming Buck many, many months ago. Months predicted ago. This, He's uh, taken a lot of victory laps. Yes. Clay owes me a steak, and we're going to go out. You know that place in Miami where they have, like, the gold case oh, yeah, and the great. smoke yeah, and whatever? Yeah. You know what I mean? Expensive yeah, yeah, it's the most yeah, yeah. It's like He's they're trying just to find money the most on fire. Yeah, 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 all of it. All of it. The whole the theatrics. That's where Clay's going to take me. We're going to have to put a little steak bib on me the whole thing. It's going to be great. But... J.D. Vance, we're very pleased about this. Uh, I thought it was a great pick. Clay thinks it's a good pick, and he's happy that it's gone down that way. There's some reporting out there that it came down to the wire, though. And now that the reveal has happened, and it's clear, and it's done, and J.D.'s the guy, they're saying that y you and your brother, Don Jr., who we both know well, um, it, that you guys basically were like Team J.D. and a critical push at the end to make this happen. Can you, can you confirm or deny that that's how this went down? Yeah, listen, I'm a I'm a guy who who wants DGT to go with his gut. You know, there's there's people I really liked, and and all the people were immensely competent. They're they're great. They're great people. It's hard. You know, Rubio had a little bit of a Florida problem, and it's kind of hard to have you know two people from the same state, obviously. But you know, amazingly qualified as is um, as is the governor, obviously. But uh, JD's great. The chemistry that those guys have is is amazing. You know, he's been his own success in business, as you guys know better than anybody. He's kind of quickly rose the political ladder. You know, very similar to my father, right? Yes. Massively successful in business, close. You know. Rose the political ladder. He's got a lot of fire. He's going to be incredible in the Rust Belt. He's incredibly well-respected. Awesome story. He's willing to go into enemy territory, and most Republicans aren't. Right? I mean, I just did all, all the CNNs and yeah, NBCs we, we, and everything we else. And, any Sunday show, yeah. he'll, he can do anything. Yeah, you know what? Most people aren't. I, I am. Don is. He is. But most people are going to try and camp out on the friendlies and you know, we kind of try and get their message out. We don't need that right now. We, we need somebody to really... Last question for you here as we finish. Yeah, we got one minute. One minute here. You have a six-year-old, a four-year-old. Your dad as a grandfather is what kind of grandfather compared to what kind of dad he was? He's amazing. He showed up my daughter's. It was grandfather, like, you know, granddaughter day at school. And so no one knew he was coming. Obviously, you know, the heads of the school did because of the Secret Service. And he shows up there, and my daughter just burst into tears, ran up to him, gave him the biggest hug. That's and, so awesome. And the video literally went viral. It's, you know, him holding this delicate little hand, 
It was a former president walking into kind of this grandfather's day. And it was just it was amazing. He's an amazing grandfather. He's an amazing guy. I couldn't ask for a better father. And guys, frankly, I wouldn't take all the arrows that I did if he wasn't the greatest guy in the world. I will fight till the end of time for the man. He's done such a great job with, with our family. None of us have ever broken. None yeah. of us have ever broken. I mean, do you see the difference between the Bidens and us? We do. We you talk know? about it, actually.